Journey with Judy. Honest, open, transparent. It's hot. There's no such thing as Good morning, and thank you for journeying with Judy, your unworthy servant and messenger of today's teaching. It's a privilege to be on the other side of this microphone. It never gets any easier coming here and doing this, but it just becomes more obvious why I'm supposed to be doing it. So thank you for allowing this to happen. Okay, as my sister says, I go from the lump in my throat to balls to the wall. And here we go. (laughs) So my man and I, this summer, we took a six-hour trip to Ohio. My strongest feeling about taking this trip was anticipation. And you know, I dig being in the car with Bob. We have a good time together. We enjoy each other's company. And of course, I have his undivided attention, so he's got to listen while I'm talking. And here's the thing. He told me it was a straight shot, straight shot from here to Ohio. It was an easy drive. It would be a good day for driving. And so I was very much looking forward to it. So I would say three hours into the drive, things were going really, really well. But here's the deal. Driving conditions dictate my disposition. Um, I am one of those people who will always be a backseat driver. I can't tell you how many times Bob says there's no brake on that side of the car. Um, I get sweaty palms. I do a little (gasps) little gasping. um, And I just continue to tell him how he should be driving when the conditions change. And that's exactly what happened on this trip um, in the summer. And as the conditions changed, the anticipation um, turned to desperation. Um, In front of us, what seemed so clear, the road and the destination in which we were headed, became very unclear. And a tremendous storm came came in, and I said to Bob, let's turn around. Like, let's just go home. Let's stop it. It wasn't meant to be. We're out of here. Let's go back. And it got to the point where I was so scared because we could not see, like, one inch in front of us. And I would say to him, like, "How how can you see? How do you know where we're going? Slow down. And here's the thing, when I'm in the car and I'm really, really mad, I look out the window. That's a sure sign to everyone in the vehicle that mom is mad. And so Bob said, just look out the window. Just look out the window. I got this. And as I looked out the window, to some degree, my disposition changed because I stopped focusing so much on what I could not control. And I put my faith and trust in something bigger than me. And in this case, it was not my man. It was the fact that we would at some point get to our destination. But my concern was that he stayed focused, that he didn't take his eyes off the road or his hands off the wheel. And in the midst of all that, I kept thinking, how can I be calm and confident when conditions change? Needless to say, we got to our destination even though I went from anticipation to desperation. The good is never as good as the bad is bad, so we forgot all about the trip, and it was phenomenal. Direction with intention is not enough to guarantee our destination, especially when the conditions ahead are unclear and uncertain. Last week we talked DWI. This week we're talking OWI. What's the difference? Why should you care? I'll tell you why when we return. You are listening to Journey with Judy on Lake 96.1. We'll be back. Welcome back. You're listening to Journey with Judy on Lake 96.1. And we left asking the difference between a DWI and an OWI. And I am here to tell you in the state of Wisconsin, the proper terminology for operating while impaired 
is the same as what another state would call a DWI, driving while intoxicated. But since we make everything about faith and about God, I am going to give you new definitions of those words. Direction with intention is the DWI I want. And operating with intention is the OWI I want. And just for the record, the state of Wisconsin is ranked number 41 out of 50. 50 being the highest in fatalities when it comes to operating while impaired. I do not want to go through my life operating while impaired. So whether it's a DWI or it's an OWI, it's just not enough because it's surrounded by intentions. And how do we know when insight, intentions, and information is insufficient? What seems so obvious that I'm headed in this direction all of a sudden becomes unclear, causes me to be uncertain, and now I'm doing a little recalculating. Our verse this morning is, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. That means you're not supposed to try to figure it out because you don't know. We've talked about before that the heart is where it all starts. It's where your faith and your hope and your confidence has to reside. It's either trust or the opposite, fear. Trust, true, resolve under severe testing. In comparison to... Fear, false evidence appearing real. It's when facts and figures just don't add up. Trust is the dependence upon something and the reliance on the character of another. How many times have we done that and been let down? How many times do we put our faith in people, places, or things and they don't come through? This verse is telling us in every category, every choice, every time, all the time, we are trusting in the Lord. In my misery of my addiction and in the demise of my marriage and in the start of my ministry, those were three significant times in my life when trust became more than just a five-letter word. How could it work out? How could there be any path that would be the right one? And how could I consider any other path that wasn't previously presented? And I'll tell you, at those times in my life, I never held on tighter, but I never felt so free because I knew my faith and my trust was in something greater. Lean not on your own understanding. Lean not. By definition, leaning in scripture means to be propped up against. Do not prop up against what you think you know. My kids say to me all the time, you have no idea what you're talking about. And you know what? In many cases, they don't. And so I am walking with an OWI, operating while impaired as a mother, as a wife, um, as, a, as a person of faith, as a friend. Because here's what I do. I just think the way I did it, the way I know it, must be the way it is for you. I think I know what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Here's how me, here's how my, here's how I did it. I call myself the Trinity, me, myself, and I. But I know opinions are formed by education and experience, and that's really all I have, and I hope that's always evolving. But I know from this verse it's not absolute. I know that I have to decide before a crossroad, before a stop sign, whose understanding I'm going to rely on. And I can't be viewing things from only my perspective. 
I know there was an instance in our life in the past summer with our son, and, and Bob and I were absolutely 100% convinced that military school would be the option for our son as his character was compromised. It was not even up for debate. I had godly people step into my life and speak to Bob and I and say, you know what? It's not the right thing. It's the wrong way. It will not yield the proper results. Lean not on your own understanding. Needless to say, Carter went on a mission trip instead, and it yielded much more fruit. But we had to be willing to accept God's understanding and lean into him and not think that we're Kias. Bob always says, ah, he's a Kia. She's a Kia. That means a know-it-all. If he calls you that, it's not a very good thing. <laughs> in all your ways, acknowledge him. Part three of this verse. That's in your marriage, in your money, in your morality, your parenting, your profession. It just says honor him. Honor him. Factor him into every aspect of your life. All paths. The definition of acknowledge is just simply to recognize the existence and force and power. Power that we don't have within ourselves. He gets to be first because he gives us the best and he gets the last say in everything. And the best part is like you totally get to blame him when everything goes wrong. Because if you prayed about it, you trusted in him, you leaned not on your own understanding, you acknowledged him, then you can say, God, what's up with that? What's up with that? And I know I have lots of questions that I'm going to ask, and I'm going to get some answers. They just might not be on this side of heaven. But I want to acknowledge him in all ways. He will direct your path. That's the promise. If you're trusting, you're leaning, and you're acknowledging, you might as well say in here, he's gonna, and then he will, for sure, direct your path. That's it. He will. He will do this if you do that. And that just means he's going to make it really clear, or he's going to clear the way. And you'll know that because it will be so obvious to you. You're not going to have to look back and wish and wonder why you didn't. Because you're going to know that the, the direction you're headed in is not only where you want to go, but where you're going to end up. A good plan is like a road map. It shows the final destination and usually the best way to get there. I'm going to change that quote. A God plan is like a road map. It shows the final destination and always the best way to get there. Because it doesn't matter if you're an SUV or a hybrid. A cliff is a cliff. And rowing harder doesn't help when we're headed in the wrong direction. I want to trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not on my own understanding, but in all my ways acknowledge him because he's going to direct my path morally, spiritually, financially, professionally, academically. You name it, he's going to do it. That's the promise. If you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. I'm going to break. When we return, ADD, that is me. Tell you why. You're listening to Journey with Judy on Lake 96.1.
Welcome back. Thank you for choosing to journey with Judy this morning. And thank you to the Cunis Country Auto Group for sponsoring our show. It is the journey and not the destination. So where we are, where we've been, and where we're headed matters. We left the month of November as a nation shocked by a college football scandal, yet uplifted by the survival story of a congresswoman. While presidential debates continue, Obama's health care law reached a major milestone. We went from the Oscar shakeup to a paternity suit. We can be confident that December has more in store of the same. Who are we trusting? Who are we leaning on? Who are we acknowledging to be directed? If not you, then who? There's unprecedented times as a nation, as communities, as families. We need some extraordinary measures. We got to live life with purpose and on purpose. And we can always look back and see what we should have or could have done. Direction with intention, operating with intention, is not enough because it means we're impaired. I told you I was ADD. That's like a really big surprise for any of you to hear that. But what that stands for this morning is attention, direction, and destination. I want to be a person known for that. We get the direction by trusting first. Trust in the Lord with your whole heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. This verse is not saying don't plan, be passive, and make excuses. It is saying before the insight, before the information, before anything, you got to do this. Because then he is going to do that. We want to end up here. And we know we can't have this without that. You know, someone told me re, uh, this past weekend that parenting is a full contact sport. Yes, that is so true. I want to be a prayerful, purposeful, passionate parent. Most importantly, I want to be a prayerful one. And I know that I want nothing more for my kids than to end up in the destination that they don't even know they want, but I know that they want. Because I know it's what God wants. I cannot stop my kids from wanting to go in a direction that will take them where they don't want to go. But I know my man and I, we make a pact to remove every tool possible that will help them get to the wrong place. We take away phone privileges, Facebooks, computers, whatever. But the bottom line is they have to want to. We have to want to not be impaired. And impaired simply means it's a disability of some kind. It means our, it's, we've been diminished, weakened, and we are functioning at an incompetent level. And when we are doing things in our own will and our own strength with our own ideas of what's right, the odds are they're wrong. Quick, confident, and wrong. That's what my father-in-law used to say. I want to have the ability to know and then do something about it. Because I know God's going to lead me. He's going to guide me. He's going to always walk beside me, which is really good. Because I'm a person without vision and that means I'm running in every direction. And I've run out of time. we got to go to break. You are listening to Journey with Judy right here on Lake 96.1.
Welcome back. You are listening to Journey with Judy on Lake 96.1. And we've talked about today how we can know what to do and which path to take to get us to where we want to be. This week, let's trust, lean, acknowledge, and know that the path we are on is where we really want to end up. And the way we celebrate in our house, being on the right path and ending up where we wanted to go is my man and I, we do the chest bump. And Kennedy said, and Campbell said, those are my two daughters, no parents do a chest bump. We surveyed school, no parents do a chest bump. So just to clarify, it's really not like a full frontal chest bump because that would be painful. But we definitely go running across the kitchen and Bob and I jump as high as two forty and 50-year-old people can jump. And we do that like chest bump thing to acknowledge that it was a good choice and we did a good thing on behalf of the kingdom of God or our children on that given day. So thank you so much again for listening to Journey with Judy. Dave and Nancy are next on Life Matters, so stay tuned. And this week, keep it hot, honest, open, and transparent. Peace out.